Hey there, and welcome back into the Bulldog Blitz. I'm joined by our resident expert. We have Eric Brown in the studio to talk a little Butler sports. Thanks for joining us, Eric. All right, good to be back. Well, let's talk about Butler football. They continue to amaze me. 6-0 and now, a big 23-14 victory over Valparaiso, something we had counted on all season long. The offense wasn't really there. Their defense kind of had to step up big. Yeah, their offense has usually been clicking, but uh, it really struggled on Saturday. Andrew Huck only had six yards and two interceptions in the first half, but the defense just really stepped up and, and got some huge stops. Uh, two fourth quarter sacks that led to Butler scores and another come from behind victory for Butler, their third in a row. That's just, they, they really got a win when they weren't playing their best, and that's what distinguishes a great team from a good team. So that's good to see for Butler. 3-0, and those last three victories over league rivals, and now they're sitting tied for first place. Is this team for real? Can they sustain this for the whole season? I think they can. They have that mental toughness. They've been, they've been trailing in a lot of their games, and they just never get down on themselves. They always come back. Uh, they're tied for first right now with Drake and Dayton, and that's actually the last uh, two out of the last three games of the season. So it should be a, a really fun finish in the Pioneer League standings. They've had a couple home games, but these long road trips, especially in North Carolina, to take on Campbell, which is Saturday. Uh, is this a chance where they might slip back, or is this the game that they prove that they really belong? Yeah, we'll see. This will be a, a very big game for, uh, for Butler. Although Campbell is winless in the Pioneer League, uh, some teams tend to uh, look past those teams that might be a little bit weaker, and they can get in trouble there. They need to stay focused on Campbell this week and uh, get another victory. The volleyball team, you were there, I was there. They took on Youngstown State. We saw very commanding fashion. That first set was close, but they really took control in the second and third. It was a big statement victory because they had a tough road trip back in Chicago dropping Loyola and UIC. They put them back on the map. Yeah, it's definitely a big bounce back win after dropping those two tough ones. Uh, the first set, they were down 23-21, <laughs> could have quit, came back, won the first set, and uh, the rest, they just walked, the Valparaiso really wasn't there, didn't have a chance to rest the match. Uh, Portia Allen and Jessica Wolf once again double doubles as usual. Yeah. You can almost always count on that. <laughs> uh, Dupreli with uh, 27 digs and Gina Vera did an excellent job with 44 assists. They came to play and uh, they'll have to step it up with this tough road trip coming up though. Just like the football team, they will now head to the road. Three game road trip for them including Wright State and Cleveland State, which is a very good volleyball team. What do you expect this three game road trip? Well, it's definitely going to be an interesting road trip. A road trip uh, crucial for the uh, standings. Wright State, they're, they're currently, Butler beat them in a sweep earlier this year, but Cleveland State is in first place. Uh, they're, them and Valpo are tied in first place. Butler did get the win over them at home 3-2, but it'll be interesting to see how they respond on the road. This men's soccer team, they're creeping up in the national polls up to 18 in Soccer America. A big victory over IUPUI, the little crosstown rivalry. What'd you make of that game coming off a big victory over I, IU? Yeah, well, they, they, didn't, they took no time to get in the, in the <laughs> score. Uh, Matt Hedges got a goal in the third minute. Uh, IUPUI tied it up, but we were able to get the win. Uh, great goalkeeping once again for the Bulldogs. Another good win, and, and they're having a great season so far. I remember last year talking to you, we, we were uh, surprised at how well all the fall sports have done, especially men's soccer. They were getting national rankings last year, led by Frank Pitano. Um, but this year, it looks like the team may even be better than last year. What, what's your take on that? You know, I, I really think they are better this year. Uh, they got their both their goalkeepers back, their entire defense is back. They've had, they've done a great job of replacing the senior goal scorers of uh, Eddie Garcia and Frank Patano. Uh, they've got Boris Gatsky has really stepped up. Um, they've got some good freshmen coming in playing. Uh, Polak, he's playing real well offensively. And now they're 18th in the country. They've got wins over 14 IU and 25 South Carolina. It's been a really good year and hopefully they can finish out the Horizon League on top. Now, if we want to talk national attention, we have to jump ship here for a second and talk men's basketball. Uh, preseason rankings are, are just phenomenal for this team. Such high hopes. This Saturday, in fact, they'll have the blue and white scrimmage open to the public. If fans who are watching this want to come out, what can they expect to see? Well, uh, practice has just started this week, and, and one of the things that you always focus on in the, in the beginning practices, most teams do, is uh, defensive uh, strategies as well as sets. And one of the great things about this Butler team is everyone's back, so they can take time to focus on some, some more uh, specialty plays and things like that. They, they should be a step ahead of the competition. It'll definitely be fun to watch on a Saturday, and you'll get a chance to look at a newcomer, Andrew Smith, as well. You know I like my Butler basketball, but I have to play devil's advocate for here for a second. Such high hopes, a team that's still young in some capacity, they're leading scorers and, and whatnot. Is this team getting too overhyped? I mean, you're hearing 10, 11, 12 for preseason ranking. Are, is, is that where they're at? Are, I mean, is that the right spot? Should they be lower? What do you think? Well, 
I don't I don't want to necessarily say where they should be ranked. <laughs> they are getting a lot of national attention, and they have had a great off season. Uh, Gordon Hayward and Shelvin Mack played for the U.S. national team, getting a lot of experience there. Obviously, the trip to Italy playing Swiss national team helps out with experience as well. Um, they just got to be careful not to get their head in the cloud, clouds and focus on all this media attention. Remember that uh, everybody starts a season with zero wins, zero losses, and they got to come out and play regardless of what they're picked to do. And we are creeping ever closer to that first exhibition game here at Ingle Fieldhouse. Thank you for joining us this week, Eric. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll be back with more of the Bulldog Blitz. Stay with us. Only five seconds separated senior distance runner Andy Baker from capturing the top time at the 8K Pre-National Invitational on Saturday in Terre Haute. It was a very good sign for Baker that he not only ran well, but ran well at the Laverne Gibson Championship Cross Country Course since it will be the site for the 2009 NCAA Division I Cross Country Championship. As a team, the men finished 13th out of 34 and the women finished 19th out of 37 teams entered. Freshman Katie Clark grabbed the top Butler women's time, finishing in the top 50 overall. The Horizon League Cross Country Championship will be held on Halloween up in Michigan. This weekend, most of the Butler fall teams are on the road with one exception, that of course the men's soccer team. They will take on Detroit at 4 p.m. Saturday in the Butler Bowl as they aim to remain unbeaten in their seventh straight game. Also on Saturday, the men's and women's basketball programs will hold their blue and white scrimmages in Hinkle Fieldhouse with doors opening at 9.30 a.m. The event is open to the public and after scrimmages, head coach Brad Stevens and head coach Beth Kucher will talk about the upcoming season. That will just about do it for this week's episode of the Bulldog Blitz. Make sure to catch us next week on Comcast On Demand or online at youtube.com backslash Bulldog Blitz Sports. Until then, I'm Mark Minner. We'll see you right back here on the Bulldog Blitz.